Honorable, <laughs> so if I'm not mistaken, your first opportunity out of Ghana was Germany. Yeah, Germany. How long did you stay there? Uh, I stayed there for 18 months. 18 months. And then I went to America. Uh, how did how did you just move to America through that? 18 months. Yeah, I worked hard. And the lady that I was staying with, an elderly woman, mm -hmm. uh, she took me through a lot. You know, it was not easy to get a job. So I got a job at a restaurant. It's called Times Square on Holmes Butel or whatever. And I'll start working at around 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. After that, 5 to 5. Then from 5 p.m., uh, 5 a.m., I'll drive to Promat and also do two hours. <laughs> so I'll finish about nine. Then I'll come home. I'll get home around 11. Sometimes in the train, I'll fall asleep mm -hmm. and even miss my station. I had to come back. When you sleep at 11, 2 p.m., the woman will call you. Kennedy. That's just three hours. Yes, Kennedy, when you go to America, you're going to go to school and work at the same time. You have to start from here. Wow. I have to clean the lady's house before I go to work at five. My brother, and when you get there, Germany, you work. So I have to work at the restaurant for 12 hours again and go back to Promat. In two hours. Yeah, two hours. You couldn't sleep. So I made money. And that's how I was able to Move go to the US. Yeah, America. And in fact, I'll be honest with you, the Germans, they are hardworking more than the Americans. They will really use you. So when I went to America, the second day, I got a job at Zaru Bakery. Okay. Which was not possible in Germany. In Germany. So it was a dream come true. I work at Zaru Bakery in the freezer. Though when they make the doughs, they put it in the racks and put it in the freezer. In the freezer. Very cold. When it comes out, it's like a stone. Then they'll tore it again before they put it in the what oven. Mm. So I was there. And one day in my own building, I was coming out and I met my senior, Baba Moro. He's in Kumasi. Okay. Coming out. Then he asked me, hey, what are you doing? And I'm so I live here. I said, what? I also live here. He was on the sixth floor, 5J, and I was 6H, 178th Street. So he said he works at a gas station. Mm -hmm. So he fixed me gas station as well. So I'll do the bakery 40 hours, and I'll come and do gas station. And listen, why there is no Sikadro anywhere? <laughs> my 40 hours, my permanent job is the bakery. Yeah. But those Ghanaians who have stayed in America for long, after work, all they know, most of them, entertainment. Mm -hmm. So weekends, They'll give their shift to me and, you go and, and go to parties, and then I will stay in and work. That's what I want my son to learn. Monday evening, I start from 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. to 6. Then by the time I finish checking the, the sales, it will be around 8. I have to start work at 12. So I'll go home, get some farina and some soup. Then straight to Zaru Bakery around Hans Point. That's where your official 40 hours begins. Yes. So I came to a point. I was doing 88 hours a week from the gas station. I start Monday, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. That gives you 16 hours. Wednesday, 10 to 6. That gives you 24 Thursday. Okay, that gives you 32. Wow. Then you do Friday. Now listen. Friday, 10 to 6 
gives you the 40 hours saturday 24 hours and sunday 24 hours so i get 88 hours okay. straight and you know because if you make the slightest mistake you make you die you mm -hmm. shoot you yeah. america you are dealing with money this guy yeah. so they have bulletproof you only slide the money here mm -hmm. a gun cannot even go exactly right so saturday sunday i have curtains on the floor this uh, the oil mm -hmm. i remove them the ones that i'm selling the coal for whatever so i will tear them apart and make it like a bed and sleep on it whilst you are sleeping you are dozing then somebody knocks knocks palm number five twenty dollars your eyes are red. Wow. You are using the computer. But I was sorry, but how old were you at this point? No, I was uh, in 1985. I was 25 years. And so you didn't fall sick through the season when no. at times? No. Your body just took this normal? Yeah. Because of the training from Germany, mm -hmm. it was easy for me. It was me. easy for you. Germany, I was washing plates. And my brother, if I put my hand in the hot water or after bath, you see these white things here. Mm -hmm. Now I've used shea butter, so you can That's see. One. All these years in I Germany, yeah, I was washing plates. Just for 18 months, but till date, you if you are with me, it. yeah, after bath, you will see these white things here. So America was heaven with all these jobs. The thing is, you just went in for the jobs. So it wasn't a challenge for you because what you're saying would be a challenge for somebody else. The challenge would be that you wouldn't want to spend that number of hours. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, those we met with their green card and American passport, most of them were working in the hotels. Mm -hmm. They were making $240, $250 a week. And the 88 hours i was making only 285. then the zaro bakery mm -hmm. the 40 hours my take home was 120 dollars but you see because i put in more hours i was making about three quarters more than those with their green card and yeah, a passport well because I was earning $400 a week. Those with their passports, American citizen and whatever, were making two fifty. dollars You were making way more than them. Yeah, because I put in more Work. hours. Mm. Then I have a friend here, Osofo from Pong. He stays at Achimota. And Baba Moro taught me how to drive. I didn't know how to drive until, you know, I ate 24, not like them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they have, you know. So Baba Moro taught me how to drive. I decided to drive a taxi. So I've saved money. I went to auction and bought Chevy Impala. Same scenario. If you make a mistake, you're going to die. So we have bulletproof, bulletproof yeah. in the car. So with insurance and everything, it came to three thousand dollars. I didn't have my green card, but I started working, mm -hmm. driving taxi in the Bronx. And listen, who says Sikadro and you can make it? You can make it. In seven months, I had eight taxis. From the first one you had bought. Yeah. For every month, every day, I saved hundred dollars. The seven days will give me seven hundred dollars. Yeah, but I make more money in the weekends, mm -hmm. so I use that to pay my rent and food. But the weekend, you will still make more money. That if I save hundred weekends, I can make about one hundred eighty on Saturday, Friday night, another one hundred eighty on Friday night, uh, Saturday, Saturday night. night yeah. And then Sunday, Sunday you know, Monday. around a year, I come back home with maybe 120, 130. So, in a month, I saved $3,000.
Then I'll go to auction. I want him to listen. My son is standing there. He has to listen. Can he listen? He has a lot of things on silver platter. So I'll go there, auction, buy this car, do the insurance with lawyer Mankwa, big brokerage, mm -hmm. do the partition and everything. Then I'll give it to somebody to drive. You pay $40 a day. I don't want stories until this is where probably my father's style or whatever comes, comes in. in. Mm -hmm. If I give it to you, it's contract. Sunday evening, you bring my 280. The only time you give me excuse is when I take the car to workshop for maintenance. So regardless, they should still make the money. Yeah, you make my money. 280. And was this cool for them? Did they see you as oh, a Oh yeah, $40. It was cool. Uh, but look, because on my own, I save 100 Yeah. So if you have bought a car for you, out of the 100 you have 60 and have 40 If you are working, you can make the 60 hour time. Because I do Zaro Bakery a week, 120 And you that, are making $60. $40, yeah. yeah, and we are making $60 a day. So it was very good money. Mm. And so I don't want any story. So with these eight taxis, I saved $24,000. My stepfather was a border guard. He went on pension, Jubilee House, mm -hmm. or was uh, W.O.'s quarters that they were staying. They had to throw their things out because my stepfather didn't prepare. So they didn't have anywhere to stay. Then Azuma Nelson, and his boss, Mr. Asa, they used to have Paramount Hotel on my Chimota yeah. road. Azuma came to fight. There was a shop, a liquor store, on 114 and Lengnos Avenue. It's called Fred Wines and Liquor. It was a Guinean who said that opened that shop. So most of the taxi drivers, when we are in Harlem and we are tired, we just go and park our car there. I went in there and I saw Azuma Nelson. Wow. That, that was your first time meeting him? Yeah. Okay. And the boss, Mr. Asa. Mm -hmm. So talking, I said, oh, say, I have money for my mother. They've thrown them out of their house. But I don't know how to get the money home. The man looked at me and my age and I mentioned 24000 he was surprised. So I gave him $16,000. Mm -hmm. In 1988, Ambassadoria Enclave, when you go under the bridge, mm -hmm. you turn right, the first street, I'm telling you today, from that junction to the end, where you make a right to yeah. ANC Mo, I connected electricity on water. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, that in 1988, that is where Azuma Nelson's uh, manager bought the house for my parents. So and he actually gave them the money to sort them out. Yes, to okay. sort my parents. And he was so honest, mm -hmm. very sincere. Mm -hmm. Because he liked me, my age and that yeah. amount that I mentioned. Yeah. So when he bought the house, it was a boy's cottage. He got it for 24000 because I told him I've saved 24000 yeah. So when he got the house, then I quickly sent him the 8000 so my first house in Ghana here was April 17, 1988. 1988? Yes. <laughs> 1988. That was my first house. My second house was 624 Commonwealth Avenue in 1989. How do you May. keep numbers? You my brother, forget them. <laughs> you've gone through it. You are yeah. not lying. Yeah. It's your experience. Mm. So it will come just like that. I get that. He didn't know that Jennifer Lopez was staying on the same lane with us. He didn't know. <laughs> well, he was young. <laughs> you know? You wish you had come earlier, right? <laughs> wow. Impressive. You know, so 1989, uh -huh. I bought the house before he was born. I remember when the bank was talking to me, they could tell that I have deep accent. So the lady asked me, are you an African? I said yes. And we are paying 
$69,000 deposit. I said, yes. Yeah. And you are what? 28 years. I said, yes. I said, wow. What work do you do? I said, I'm a taxi driver. But honestly, that time, Reagan introduced this amnesty program. So I had the opportunity to work with lawyer Kwajua from a CUD. Okay. Now he's here at the Red Co. Bangalore number E1. He became my boss. That is where I make the I made the money. Regan's time, the amnesty time. Mm -hmm. So the drugs, the cicadro, everybody is talking about came from there. And our office was 3 East, 167 Street. 3 East, 167 and Jerome Avenue, then Edward Grant. Today, as I speak, is an African market. At this place. And you still own it? No, not me. Not you. At this place was in the middle. Okay. We were on the left. Okay. Then the travel agent. But today, the woman has all the three shops. Our office, her has, and the travel agent. All this happening, you had not clocked 30 years? No. Okay. No. When I was 30, I had 11 houses in Ghana. And all these through hard work. Yes. Any time, look, let me tell you, during the amnesty time, somebody who was working for a week, making $120 a week, mm -hmm. the amnesty time, I'm not exaggerating, I take home over $1,500 a day. A day. Yes. So my boss bought a house at Red Coke. No, I bought 1988, the first one, and 1989, where my parents are staying now, I, yeah. I bought it. On the same street, two houses on the Ambassadoria Enclave. One was 1988, April, and one was 1989. Then I bought Reco Bangalore number A5 in 1990. Okay. Then I went to Kaneshi and the rest. You know. So, when I made money, I will quickly come to Ghana, buy property, and go back. Because that time, I had my green card. That is how I fortified myself. Congratulations. You found the one station that plays Ghana's best urban music. YFM. Listen to YFM 107.9 Accra, 102.5 Kumasi, and 97.9 in Takarati. Takarati. Bye. Bye.